So see, this is uh, when John said basically the two, the two angle, theta one and theta two, will be different because when the flow goes through the first shock, he had m one, but after the first shock, he get weakened. M two is definitely smaller than m one. He just went through an oblique shock wave. So when m two are hit by the same delta that the first shock was fa or the first flow was facing. It will generate theta two, okay? And that two, theta two is smaller than theta one, sorry. That theta two is bigger than theta one. Why? Because M two is weaker than M one. It's not really fast so that it can close the, the shock on the body. Because his Mach number is smaller because he doesn't have that much kinetic energy, his shock will be bigger. If he get even bigger, he will not even form. What if M1 is really, really small? Sorry, what if M2 is really, really small? What do you think will happen? No oblique shock. So what will happen is basically the oblique shock will come like this, but it cannot reflect. It will actually have a normal shock standing for it. And then the flow here will become subsonic. Okay? Why? Because the Mach number that Mach number, M2, doesn't intersect with that delta. See, this delta require a bigger M1 to, bigger like M1, for example. For M1, let's imagine this is M1. Well, that was a solution for M1. But come M2, that M2 doesn't have a solution for that delta. There's one of the homework problem in the textbook like this. He basically goes through a shock reflection, and you try to come up with a solution after the second shock, and it does not really hit, the, there is no intersection in D1. Why? The Mach number is really weak, it's really small. There is no solution for it. So at that point you go to normal shock? Yeah, it's a normal shock. Okay. It's, it's a normal shock. There is no oblique shock solution for it. Because I saw that normal problem, I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Right. <laughs> There is actually a very good sketch in our textbook that's showing basically how does this structure look like. It's, a lit it's really a little bit complicated and uh, we, are, we are not going to fix this in our course, right? So if I give you an, a reflection, it will be an oblique, an oblique, right? But I'm just telling you that sometime you don't have a solution. And here's why Nick had a free quiz, because I told him, well, this, okay, we just said that Theta two is bigger than theta one, but how about theta r? Is theta r the reflected angle? You know, when someone looking to the shock and reflecting it like this, there is incident angle that's theta one, and there is a reflected angle measured from the floor as well, theta r. Is theta r is the same as theta two? And the answer is no, they are different. Why? Because theta two is measured from the same direction or from the same line where delta is measured. Where, what is that line? That's the regional direction the direction before they hit that wedge, okay? That's very important for shock reflection, to, to see where is the delta and where is the theta measured from, okay? Very good. So, theta r is equal to theta i, and we don't really know if theta r is equal to theta i. What we know is theta two is bigger than theta one, and what we know is theta r is not theta two. Theta, two, theta r is smaller than theta two. So at the end of the day, will that make theta r the same as theta i? We have no idea. We just have to calculate the number and see if, because see you are, we, you are reducing theta two to theta r by taking delta out, but also theta two is bigger than theta one. So did you take enough to make it exactly like theta one or did you take too much or too little? So that's why we don't know what's the ratio between theta r and theta i. Right, so I'm not gonna talk about this. You already know how to solve this, right? And we already talked about this too. Why a shock? This shock is reflecting from the upper wall. Why? Why this shock? The first shock is reflected from the upper wall because the upper wall basically want the flow to become horizontal, and the flow was moving with the lower wall. So when when he hit the upper wall, he need to now start moving with the upper wall. How does a supersonic flow change direction? He changed with that shock. So that's why the, the shock was reflected, because the hour wall is forcing the flow to change direction. And so for the same reason why the second shock was not reflected from here. 
because the lower wall is already moving with the flow. There is no conflict between this guy and the lower wall. Has the, has the lower wall been any different? You know, if it's like a little bit up like this, the flow would reflect from it. Now, what about if the angle, instead of being parallel there, what if it opened up even wider? And that's today chapter. That's chapter seven. So Robert's question is, so we understand that if you send the shot, if the wall is like this, obviously what will happen? A shock wave will reflect, right? And then reflect, and then reflect, and then reflect, and it will keep reflecting. But his question is, what if the wall is like this? What will that do? So, by the way, to understand why it's different, that's very important. Why if you give him more space is different from giving him less space. Giving him less space, compressing him, pushing him into a tighter place, that's an oblique shock wave. But b giving him more area, that will not be an oblique shock wave. That will be chapter seven. We'll see what will happen. But the first step is for R to be able to tell, is it, am I giving it more space or giving it less space? Am I giving him a chance to expand or I'm actually compressing it, <coughs> all right? That's the reason the people will screw up the airfoil problem in the second midterm. So they, they know how to solve oblique shock. You go to the second midterm, of course you know how to solve an oblique shock wave. And you will know how to solve chapter seven that we're gonna go through today. The difficulty that students have is they look to the geometry, like this geometry we are talking about. Let's imagine it's basically this, okay? And they basically are they are now really, don't really know, does this generate an oblique shock wave or does it generate the other thing that we're gonna have today? Right, and you, ha you have to be able to basically tell yourself, for sure this will not generate an oblique shock wave. Right now, at this stage of your life, okay, you should be able to look to this and say, this will not generate an oblique shock wave. Why? Because I'm giving him more space. I'm not really, forcing him to go into a smaller place and not compressing him on itself. It's different between concave and convex, basically corner. So your eye should be able to see this. Isn't that essentially acting like a converging diverging nozzle? However, a converged diverging nozzle is a very bad thing to, to play with because it's different from supersonic to subsonic. So if you try to draw the analogy to a converged diverging nozzle, you could get confused over it. But you are right, this, this part look like the diversion part of a conversion diversion nozzle. So you should tell yourself, I know the diversion part, give the flow more expansion. The nozzle basically, when you give him more area, he does not get compressed, he does not generate oblique shock waves. Right? Let's, let's not talk about this too much, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Okay guys? So now, this was a homework problem. You know, when you had two shock hitting each other, we realized that this flow coming here and coming there cannot persist. They cannot go through each other. They will have to straighten up, all right? And so to straighten up, that means that they will have basically, a, they will have basically a common direction that the, both of them will go through. And that's how you solve the the whole problem. But what if, what if delta 2 and delta 1 are different? Alright? So if delta 2 and delta 1 are different, after, the guy, after those guys hit each other and after the two shocks reflect, will the flow in this part move horizontally or not? Will this guy move horizontally? No. We, we cannot tell yet, right? It really depends on which one is, is bigger. But we can tell one thing for sure. What is it? Is that those guys, the upper flow and the lower flow, will have to have one direction. Right? They could both going up a little bit or both of them going down a little bit, but for sure they are all having the same direction because again they cannot go through each other. You cannot just say, but it's air, you know he can go through. No cannot go through each other. They have to have exactly the same direction, up and down. What else do, you, do they have to have? They have to have the same direction? Same velocity? No. They could slip against each other. And that's why that 
imaginary line dividing the two guys, we actually call it the slip, slip line. So you could have one moving faster than the other one across that slip line. So they have to have the same direction and they have to have the same no, so if they don't have the same, that's what he said, it's not the same magnitude. One of them could be moving at Mach 3 and the other one could be moving at Mach 2.5. That's okay. That's what I said, same direction. Excellent. Excellent. They will have to have the same pressure. The upper and the lower part should have exactly the same pressure. Because if they don't have the same pressure, they will change direction. The, uh, the guy with the higher pressure will push on the guy with the lower pressure. And they will change direction until they have one common direction with one common pressure. All right? Those two things that are common, that's how we're going to solve them, actually. All right? So this is the homework problem, all right? And actually, here's the solution for it. All right? And you can see that trick is basically to realize that it's this... They are all moving horizontally, therefore I know this delta, I know that delta. What's the delta? It's the same one that he had in the first time. But if they, they have different delta, here's uh, the problem now. Again, I'm reminding you, if, they, if there is symmetry, they will leave together, same pressure, and both of them horizontal. But if let's call this guy 3 and this guy 5, delta 3 and delta 5, Mach 1 equal 2, P1, 100 kilopascal, and required is this guy. What's that guy? This delta is the angle of the slip line. <coughs> Do you see this? The, this is the slip line, and the slip line is making capital delta with the horizontal. And he's basically asking, what does the slip line, what's the angle of that slip line? Is he going up one degree, or is he going up two degree, or what exactly? Right? And note that a on top of that slip line, there is one flow here, moving with it. And at the bottom of that slip line, there is another flow, moving with the same direction. Okay, it's this direction here, this guy, and this would be this guy. If we have two deltas, where do we measure from? That's, that's the big question. That's the, really what's hard about this problem. So after you understand that they are moving in the same direction, and they have the same pressure. Now you are trying to calculate the deflection that they went through to reduce that pressure. The way to solve this problem is to solve the first shock. Of course, you can do that. But then to solve the second shock for this guy and the second shock for that guy, so that you can calculate those two pressure and figure out are they the same or not, you have to be able to see the, the deflection that this guy is going through and the deflection that this guy is going through. So, this is what's really hard, and, and we need to blow up this figure to see it, actually. So, let's see how we can do that. It's so hard to the extent that one textbook actually had it wrong. Right? So, again, what is the deflection? Change. Exactly. That's what you need to put in your mind. If you are after that angle, you just basically see where he was going before and where is he going after. And the difference between them is the deflection that will generate the shock. So let's look at the bottom. So originally he was moving horizontally. Now, after the first shock, he's moving with five degree. You see that, everyone? He's moving up five degree. And then after he crossed the second shock, where he's going now? He has to go with that common direction, the delta that we are trying to find out. So after he crossed, rather than moving with five degree up, rather than moving with the, the delta two, the five degree, he has to move with capital delta with the horizontal. That's the common direction. So he was going this way, now he's going this way. So we really deflected him this much, right? You see that? How much is that? This is, let's call it delta two four. It's a deflection of the second flow, not the third flow. So how much was that deflection? Well, it's the difference between this and this. This is five degree with horizontal. This is delta with horizontal. Difference between them is delta two minus capital delta. 
that's the easy part it get more complicated on the top part so you have to be happy with this before we move are you happy with do you see this he was planning to go up five degree with the horizontal right this is what he was going through but after this after the second shock he has to move with this common direction everything here is moving with that direction what is that direction capital delta with the horizontal okay or basically if i plot it here it's like this he was going with delta 2 now with the horizontal now he's going with capital delta with the horizontal the difference between where he was going and where he's going now it's delta 2 4 delta 2 minus capital delta. now you go to the upper guy do we have a better drawing not really if we go with the upper guy we, let's see so he was planning to go with before the shock the second shock he was going to go with this delta 3 whatever the angle is 3 degree he was going with this delta 3 with the horizontal and then after the second shock you have to go in that common direction so not only we straight, straighten him up and or now he's moving horizontally no we even pushed him up capital delta so how much reflection did we give him first we we made him horizontal and then we even pushed him up so this guy the delta 3 4 is excellent delta 3 plus capital delta so back to the problem what does he want from us he want to figure out what is the common direction delta he gave us the Mach number the pressure those two angles and he's asking us for this how do we solve it try and error try and error you assume this delta you assume it's two degree up and do what we'll calculate the pressure here and calculate the pressure here and tell yourself are they are the same if they are the same your delta is right if this guy is too high and this guy too low obviously you you went too high on the delta you pushed the upper guy too much that his pressure is really high so you have to relieve a little bit you take it down a little bit if you relieve too much again you you, you make, make this guy bigger than this one so you keep moving it or you change your value until the pressure on top the pressure at the bottom is the same one year in the final i basically give them as not the whole problem i give them just multiple choice and i said across the slip line is the pressure and the temperature is the same or is the pressure and the mac number is the same or is the direction and the, the pressure is the same so they just have to pick that well across the slip line you have to have the same pressure. direction and pressure direction pressure not magnet not velocity uh, and temperature not pressure and velocity not same direction same pressure right and so this is a chart basically for the solution iteration kind of you assume delta you solve the second see the first shock is done it doesn't really matter what is your this doesn't affect the first shock right so the first shock the m2 and m3 here and here this is done it's the second shock for the upper flow and the second shock for the lower flow it's those guys delta 2 4 and delta 3 4 so assuming the delta will get you those guys this will allow you to solve the pressure you check the pressure if not you readjust and you keep moving until it gets right questions So again, it's those guys. And this is the hardest part about the problem, okay? You mean from the graph? Right. Let, first, let's write them here because you want to see them. Okay? So those, those, are the, those are the guys that you will feed them here and here. Now, where are they in the graph? again we are trying to find out the deflection angle for the second shock okay not the, the first shock is straightforward it's this five that's this deflection that's what you need the theta what happened after this first deflection the flow is moving up everything here is moving up with five you get that and then once he cross that reflect that reflection of the first of that shock what will happen he need to change his direction 
where he should go. He should go with the common direction, the direction for the two guys moving with. So before he was moving with that blue line at five, after he's moving with this guy. What is the direction of that guy? It's capital delta with the horizontal. See, he was moving with delta two with the horizontal, now he's moving with capital delta with the horizontal. He was planning to go like this, but you turned him down. How much did you deflect him? The difference between this and this. The difference between, say, five and two. So he went through two shockwaves, two oblique shockwaves to get there. Of course, but the first one is very straightforward, right? It's this guy. And this is the second one. I didn't see the second shockwave. Right, it's this red one, right. It's this red one. And this guy, this is the first shock that this guy will go through. And what will happen after it? He will go like this, right? He's going with a, with a three degree. And then after this, the second one, where is going? With a common direction. So this and this, they are both moving with a common direction. Yes, Yang. So what would happen if the two strings meet and there's no common direction? Like, what no, they have to have a common direction. If you, if you mean they are, don't have a common direction, you mean when they first met, when the flow just first started, well, the flow will adjust so that the two pressure across the slip line, that imaginary boundary, need to have the same pressure across. So the, the flow will adjust so that the pressure is exactly the same across the slip line. Okay. Very good. So what I would like you to, to see over here you know, what makes this problem also special is we generated for the first time, not the first time, you did this in the, in the homework problem too, in the third homework problem. You generated a shock wave without a wall, right? This second shock wave, this was, the first one was generated because of wall. Why the second one was generated? Because it ran into another flow because it ran into another body of fluid with high pressure. That pressure forced the flow to change direction. So if we have a supersonic flow and we, for whatever reason, make him meet very high pressure next to it, that will generate a shock wave on him. That will compress him. Okay, that's exactly what happened here. So if this doesn't have always to be a wedge, it could just be very high pressure and it will do the same thing it will generate an oblique shock wave, all right? So for example, this is the tail of an airfoil. Let's imagine an airfoil, and you guys are looking at, we are looking here, at the end. Huh? This is the tip, at the end, basically, the trailing edge. And look at this, let's imagine that the flow accelerated somehow, or he was already flying supersonically. But the point is the Mach number, the Mach number here is three and the Mach number here is two. Supersonic, supersonic, all right? And then look at this, what happened here? Obviously this guy cannot keep going down at 10 degree and this guy cannot keep horizontally, right? Because they will run into each other. So what will happen? they will have to have a common direction. The slip line, see that slip line? This is the slip line, is making delta with the horizontal. And everything now, after this, will have to go in that common direction. So will this, is this is considered a compression? Let's talk about the lower guy, that's easier. So he was planning to go horizontally, now you are forcing him to go down with delta. Is that compression? Yes, you are annoying him. You are giving him less space. So that will generate an oblique shock. And look where the delta and the theta is measured. They are measured from the before direction, where he was going originally. That's the theta, and this would be the delta. So the delta is basically this guy. For M1, delta 1 is basically capital delta. Right? And even for the guy on the top, he was planning to keep minus 10. Chances are he will, because the flow at the bottom, he will not keep going at minus 10. Maybe he will go at minus 8, minus 7, minus 5. I mean, that delta 
will have to be less than 10 to accommodate this guy. So that's also kind of compression, right? So that's why another shock wave will be generated. And look again where theta is measured. So if this is theta 1, this is theta 2. It's measured from here. Why from here? What is that line? That's the original direction, the before direction. Okay, that line is where theta is measured. And that's also where delta is measured. And look at the delta. How much is delta 2? I'm curious on your drawing there. That says negative 10 degrees Celsius. Sorry. Clockwise. Is that clockwise? Let's call it, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a mistake. Minus 10. Okay. So, you put the degree, you know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it could be the yeah, and you're, you're teaching, you're teaching heat transfer, and you're teaching thermo, and like so. <laughs> anyway, so no, sorry for that. So it's minus ten. So now again, guys, look at the delta two for the. I need this deflection angle for this flow to so I can solve the pressure and the Mach number and stuff. So how much is that delta? It's probably ten minus the capital delta. Right? Because he was planning to go minus 10. Now he's going only minus delta. How much did we reflect, deflect him? It's the 10 minus the delta. Right? Does this make sense? And so now having those, again, this is what's hard about the problem, the geometry, to figure out how much did we really deflect him. But once you have this and you know the Mach number, it's just a normal oblique shock wave problem. And you calculate the pressure here and the temperature and the Mach number. All right? So delta 2 is always measured from the, from the flow, but the flow is going down 10 degrees. So that's how you're accounting for it? So where, where we are measuring delta, it's the same place where we are measuring theta, by the way. So delta and theta. Let's look at the lower because it's easier first. So we are measuring delta and the theta from exactly the same x. What is that x? It's the before direction. The direction where the flow was coming from. He was planning to go like this. Where he's going now? He's going along this line. This is where I'm measuring my delta. And this is how I calculate it too. I just have to tell my eye where he was going. And where is he going now? This is the delta. And that original direction, this is also where I'm going to measure my seat. Right, the second guy is different, right? The, the second guy, now let's look at the second guy. He was planning to go like this, right? He was going to keep going minus 10. But we forced him to go along the slip line. How much did we reflect, deflect him? This is the delta, 2. See I'm, where I'm measuring it from? I'm measuring it from the previous direction. And where is the theta measured from? That's the theta 2. So we measure it from the green for the upper guy, we measure it from the red for the lower guy. Again, this is really the hardest part. So you mean if you don't get it straightforward, just keep thinking about it. All right? So here is the solution. So basically you figure uh, so what was required? Find the flow direction between the two of them and find M3 and M4, right? So you will actually, you will have to assume delta until you basically uh, get the same pressure on both sides, right? So it turned out tight error, it's minus five, and therefore this delta C and delta four, and that basically reduce the two pressure on the same side, okay? Questions? All right. One of you asked me, to actually, I think it was uh, Josh, but he's not here today. And it's basically for that, if you want to make an Excel file to do those oblique shock wave, how to do it. So that graph, you know, you can solve it basically by, it's a, you have this equation and it's obviously, if I want to solve this to get theta, what's the problem? Nonlinear equation, right? 
linear equation in theta, there is, you cannot just pull theta out of it. You have to do it by trial and error. <coughs> or by newton raphson method, or all the nonlinear method that you learn in 3013, basically. So you, you handle this equation, and basically you iterate on it until you get the theta out of it. <coughs> 